there are in God, really. According to All Christ, uh, fine, fine. If this is what you believe in, let's go back to a return to Christ. According to Christ, how many person is the only true God? According to Christ? Yes, himself. There's the, there's Father, Son and Holy Spirit. How many person is that? There are three persons. So according to Christ, God, the one and only true God is three persons. Is that what you're saying? According to how much has been revealed to us no, 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 no. in the Bible. Not what I'm, this is what I'm asking. Christ spoke about God. He was the mouth person, spokesperson, yeah, mouthpiece of God. We call a prophet or a messenger. What did Christ say in terms of the number of person or indicate well, said, how many person God is, the only true God? He said at the end, I think, of, of Matthew or Mark, go and baptize all the world in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said that. He baptized them in the name of three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah, but my question is rather different. When he talked about God, did he ever say that someone is the only true God? And did he even make it clear who that is? Have you read the Bible? Yes, of course I have. Right. So have you come across where Jesus is saying who the only true God is? He identifies that person. Well, he says, I and the Father are one. That's one thing he said. I and the Father are one. I'm saying where he identifies who the only true God is. He actually says, you are the only true God. He, Do you know? He said he is, he is God. He said before Abraham, I am. And I am is the name of God. Did he say, did he say who the only true God is ever? Have you read the Bible entirely? He did. He said, he called himself I am. And then they wanted to stone him. There was a beggar who said I am too. Do you worship him? That's why they wanted to, well, he no, forgave sin. No, no, the, the beggar who said I am. Do you worship him? I think St. Paul said I am too. Do you worship him as well? That's a different context. I know, it's a different context. context. Good. So according to John, Chapter 17, verse 3. Do you have a Bible? I wasn't prepared to engage. It's not that. prepared. Do you have a Bible? Maybe we can do it next week. No. It's, this is the time that God is giving some guidance to you, hopefully. God willing. Do you have a Bible? I was going to don't, talk about Don't the run away from I the guidance of God. Run, but not a Bible. Okay, I have on my phone. Don't worry. I'll, re I'll read to you. What I'm Jesus Christ... I'm not talking about the Trinity. I, I'm not talking about the Trinity. I'll talk to you about it next week. Excuse me. Today, do not run away from the guidance that God may give you and give me. So in the Bible... Do you believe in three gods? Excuse me. Uh, Allah, Jibreel, and Muhammad. That's three. Um, I just imagine I didn't even hear any of that. What you, what you said, right? Just think I didn't even hear any of that. But your prophet believed in three as well, and he did everything um, in three. I am not going to. to I'm not going to re respond to any of that. Everything it's called three. a diversion tactic, as you very well know. But it fails with me. I'll tell you why. Here's the Bible from the Logos Bible Literature app. Very expensive app. Get this. It's very good. Right. John 17 verse. 3. Jesus Christ is reported to have said in red letter for you this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent so now we have identified two persons of being one is the only true God and then someone was sent by this only true God. So if you go into the very beginning, Jesus spoke these things, lifting up his eyes to heaven. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that the son may glorify you. Even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, verse three, that they may know you, the only true God. How many person is the father in your belief? One person. So according to Christ, the only true God is one person. And yet, you said earlier on, there are three persons who is the only true God. That goes against the teaching of Christ. Would you be willing, excuse me, my friend, would you be willing to take the message and the guidance of Christ or someone else, you like your own desires. Christ is telling you the only true God is one person. Not two person, not three person. One person who calls him the Father. When he asked you to pray and worship, he told you how he says, Oh Father, 
who art in earth? No, who art in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. So, who did he, who did Christ say who the only true God is? The one in heaven. Who should you worship? Well, can I ask you a question? Before you ask me a question, I want you to now acknowledge and accept this. If you're really a Bible believing Christian, I'm not going to move even a inch. So you have Jesus Christ telling you who believes in the Bible that the only true God is in heaven who he identifies as a father and he says to Mary Magdalene I am going to my God and your God and to my father and your father that means it's not only his father it's your father too so this fathership excuse me you won't let me explain I will let you explain but I want to tell you first whether you admit this so the fathership is not unique to Christ God you can call him according to Christ as your father too in your tradition so do you now accept that the only true God is the one in heaven and he's the only one worthy of worship and not Christ and not anyone else I would never accept that no. so you don't so you disagree and you reject no, the teaching no. of Christ I think it's just a bit of confusion you see God the Father he's God in all his glory no one can look at the Father and live he's, that's what Jesus means he is God in his true glory but Jesus the second person, he, hum- he emptied himself, emptied himself of his, of his full glory and came to earth as a human being. So in that sense, the Father was greater than him. Because Jesus, even though he's God, but he has emptied himself and became a frail man like us, right? So in that sense, God... God, that's what Jesus is talking about. The Father, the Father is this ineffable person, you know, this being who is the sum of all. But Jesus is God, but in human form. And the Spirit ushers from the Father and the Son. He comes and He fills me now, the Spirit, as I'm talking to you. The Holy Spirit fills me as I'm talking to you. But you can't see. Please, please understand. Do you see that? Yes. Good. I see, I see that you reject blatantly and publicly the teaching of Christ as in the Bible. When he said very clearly, the only true God is, the only true God is the Father. And yet, you make Jesus as God also. If you are the only true human being on planet Earth, can there be another human being? If I am the only true human being, can there be another human being on planet Earth? That's not apples and oranges. You can't Do you know what only means? God. If God is the only God worthy of worship, can there be another God worthy of worship? If God is, is the only God worthy of worship, worthy can there be another God worthy of worship? No, but there's, there's three persons. Not three sorry, persons. sorry. Think, think. If God is the only, the three in one God, yeah. if that three in one God is the only God wo- wo- worthy of worship, yeah. can there be another God worthy of worship? Apart from the three in one God, apart from them. Yeah. If they say the only three in one God, right, yeah, right. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the only yeah. God who, according to you, is three in one, right? Yeah. So, yeah. if the only God of the Christian is worthy of worship, yeah. can the other God of Hindus be worthy of worship also? Yeah. Using the word I only. I believe so. Why? Because you say only. You are excluded by only. So, if Jesus excluded the Father to be the only true God, can anyone else be the only true God? He never excluded himself from the Father, though. He just said the Father is the only true God. He said the Father is, is God is not the only only. Um, I do understand that you speak very good English and you understand what only means. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's not a difficulty there. Only is an exclusion, right? So when he says of that day and of that hour, no one knows. Did he mean no one knows? He says, not even the angels in heaven. Well, he doesn't know the Not only the sun, yeah. but only, but only who? Look, I know you're busy, but can I ask you? I'm not busy, I'm not busy. Just before you go. Who did he know? Who did he? <laughs> According to, about the end of the world. Well, can I ask you one question? Sorry, sorry, I want you to focus. This will solve everything. Sorry, no, I want you to. This will end the whole, whole discussion. Before you, no, no, before please. you ask. I can't do, 
Can God do all things? Is anything impossible for God? Do you want, do you want me to answer that? Can he do all things? Please, okay. Okay. thank you. Do you. Why can't God be three sorry, persons sorry. then? Do you want if he me? can do all things, do you, why can't he be Do you three? want me to answer that question? Why can't he be three? Sorry, I thought you were asking me a question. I'm asking you now. Right, do you want me to answer it? Yeah. Good, I will answer it. If I forget, remind me, right? So let's go to my original question. When Christ himself says, in your own Bible, no one knows the hour. Not even the angels in heaven. Not even the Son. Who is the Son? It's referred to himself. But only who? The Father. So if Christ says no one knows, the Son doesn't know, the angels doesn't know, only the Father knows. Do you understand that someone else knows, like Jonathan knows? Can Jonathan know? What's your name? Mike. Can Mike know? When Jesus says, no one knows, including the angels, including Jesus himself, but only the Father, can Mike know also? No, but Jesus didn't know at that stage. Wait. He didn't know. So if, if he said only the Father knows, it means only the Father knows. At, when he said that, right. at that time. At that time, did the Holy Spirit know? I don't think it mentions the Holy Spirit there, does it? No, no. It says no one knows. That excludes everything. And then he specifically talks about the angels and himself too. That means the Holy Spirit doesn't know either because it says only the Father knows. So now we establish when he said that, the Father is all-knowing, Jesus is not all-knowing, the Holy Spirit is all-knowing, Mike is not all-knowing, the angels are not all-knowing. A being who deserves to be worshipped is a being who is perfect in his knowledge. And that being is God. So if the Father is all-knowing, he is a good candidate to be God. But Jesus will fall short to be a candidate for even to be called God because he's not all-knowing. Neither would be the Holy Spirit a good candidate for being God. Neither would be the angels or even Mike. So now from the mouth of Christ in your own scripture, we establish two black and white categorical texts where he identified who the true God is. And that God is the one who sent him. The one who sent him is Jesus dependent on him, on his God. Actually, did he even call that being who sent him his God? He did, didn't he? He said to Mary Magdalene, wait, don't touch me yet. For I am going to my father and your father and to my God and your God. So he says he has a God. Imagine God the Father came and says, I'm going to go, go to my God. Who would you say? You have a God that you're going to? If Mike, you said, I have a God, would it be really sensible for all these people listening and watching to take you as God Almighty? When you identify yourself of having a God yourself. So when people were there and Jesus was telling his people, I have a God that I'm going to. Do you really think the people were not clever enough to understand that Jesus has a God and Jesus cannot be worthy of worship because he has a God? But why did he accept worship then from people? I don't, I don't when did he accept worship? Well, Thomas, Thomas fell down and, and, and said, my Lord, my God. Sure. How many Lord and how many? Two points. When he, talking about Thomas, how many Lord and how many God do you have according to Paul, the author of many of the books in the New Testament? He says we have but one God and one Lord. So that means Jesus cannot be Lord and the Father cannot be Lord. Jesus cannot be God and the Father cannot be God. And in fact, Paul very categorically explains that the God of our Lord Christ in his writings to Ephesians or Galatians, so he identifies Jesus has a God. The Lord Jesus, your Lord Jesus has a God. So Thomas's identification or statement or his exclamation that my Lord and my God is talking about two different persons. One is Jesus, who he identifies himself as a Lord, like Lord, many people can be called Lord. Lord doesn't mean God by itself. And he identifies who is God. Secondly, my second point, falling prostrated on the ground, kneeling down on the ground and prostrating to someone, it doesn't mean you make that person God that you're prostrating to. This was a custom in many cultures, in many societies, where they paid homage to kings and monarchs and queens and even 
they are pious elders, like in certain societies. It doesn't mean they are worshipping. Joseph, in the Bible, Joseph, the prophet, his brothers came and they prostrated to him. It doesn't mean they took him as God and they worshipped him. But where did so, Jesus say that he wasn't God? He sorry, sorry, sorry. One moment, before you say what he didn't say or what he did say, he let's understand that. the actions of his disciples. So his disciples, when they prostrated to him, it doesn't mean they taught him as God or considered him as God. When he clearly said, you should worship him only. You should worship the Father only. Thou shall you, thou shall you serve and no one else. So he made it clear. Yeah, but he and the Father are one. If you worship the Father, you're worshiping Jesus. Because they're one. One what? They are one. They are one God. They're one in essence. Right. Did the Bible say they're one God? You just added that from yeah. your own. No, no. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. One what? Me and you are one. Okay. I made a statement. Me and Mike are one. One what? In the context, no, in the truth. Yeah. It, we are not one meaning we are one body. In that context, he meant one God. Oh, That's the context. Um, actually, actually, this is where I would encourage you to study the proper context. I'll tell you why this is not the contextual message. In John, same chapter, he goes and he says, he tells his disciples, just as I and the Father are one, you, all of you, will be one with us. So when he says, just as I am the Father one, so shall you be. So the oneness that his disciples and God will have is the exact same oneness that he has with his Father. He says so, just as I am the Father one, you will also be one. So now he explains in context the oneness that he is talking. I'm not convinced by. I'm sorry. I'm not convinced by. Okay. Saying. Let's let's read it. Let's read it. And where did Jesus uh, say that? Okay. He said he's the true God, right? But where did Jesus say I am not the true uh, God? Wait, wait. One one one, one, one thing at a time. He always accepted worship. He always forgave sins. If Jesus wasn't God, that would be blasphemy. So Jesus must have been God. He. I mean, Jesus was God. Only God can forgive sin. Only God accepts worship. If you come up to me, sorry, what's your name again? What's your name again? Um, why do you say again? Because I didn't even talk, uh, I've told you my name yet. I thought you... No, I didn't. Sam. <laughs> no, my name is Mansoor. Hello, Mansoor. Nice to meet you, Mike. Look, I think you're a nice man. And, and I think you're a nice I, man too. I think you're sincere. And, you're very sincere. And I, I personally think yeah. you're a very nice person. <laughs> right?